Hi everybody, Adam here from Audience, and today we're going to be showing you how to get your DAW set up with your ID interface. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Reaper. So first things first, we're going to need to connect our interface. I recommend doing that first. If you've got any speakers or monitors, leave the headphones unplugged for now, leave the monitors switched off whilst we do the rest. We don't want any kind of clicks and pops causing any issues down the road. So we're going to plug in, I have an ID14 here, but the process is the same with an ID4. Plug the USB-C cable into your Mac or PC. If it's a Mac, it may be a USB-C on the other end. If it's a PC, it may be USB-A, which is the larger square connection. Both should work exactly the same. If you're doing this with an ID44, you'll need to plug in the AC connection at the same time. Now, whilst it is possible to use an ID interface with some limited functionality just by plugging it straight into the computer, we highly recommend going to the Audience website and getting the latest drivers. This means that you will have maximum compatibility, full functionality, and everything that the interface can do will be available to you. So let's go to the Audient website now. Once we are at the audience.com website, we can go to the top to products and find the link to the audio interface that we're using. In my case, the ID4 team. Having said that, whether you're using an ID4, 14 or 44, the drivers are the same and can be used across the entire range. Now we're on the ID14 page, we can go to download at the top right, and that will give us both the documentation, so the manual and the start guide, as well as the Mac OS drivers and the Windows drivers. Download the relevant one, install them through that process, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once that's installed, you may need to run the ID app at the first time, but this may come up automatically when you plug in the ID interface. The first time you do this, it will come up with the Arc Creative Hub window, where we have some fantastic software and tutorials available to you as you register your interface. I'm already a member, so I'm just going to close this window. Now I can see the ID mixer in front of me. This comes up for the ID 14 and 44, but for the ID 4, everything is done on the front of the interface. No mixer required. At this point, I'm going to plug in a microphone and then get that ready to use in my DAW. Now here's one I prepared earlier. This is a vocal microphone that needs 48 volt phantom power. On the front of each unit is a 48 volt switch per channel. So I'm going to turn that on, on the channel one, which is where I have this connected. On the ID4, the 48 volt control is on the rear of the unit. Once the microphone is powered, we're going to need to adjust the gain on the front of the interface until we see reasonable levels. Now on the ID14 and 44, we can see in the ID mixer now on screen that there is appropriate level coming in, if not a little much. On the ID4, we move the monitor DAW knob all the way to the left. And then on the LEDs on the front of the unit, we should then be able to see the levels moving as needed. Okay, we've got our microphone plugged in. We have our gain set and power. Now it's time to fire up Reaper. Once Reaper is open, it defaults to a previous project. So I'm going to delete this track and we're going to start from fresh. We do need to set some settings. So the first thing that I'm going to do is right at the top, choose where it says audio device closed, or there may be some numbers up there. We'll click that and then bring up audio device settings, which is the first option here. Once we have the audio settings open, we need to choose our audio device, which in this case is Audience ID 14. Whether it's ID 4, ID 44, we choose that here. And then we choose from these two options. The first is request sample rate, which is a way of manually asking the ID interface if we can run at particular sample rate. If you're working with CDs, then 44, 100 may be the option for you. If you're working with film, DVD production, YouTube, anything like that, then 48,000 may be the option for you. And then there is request block size, which is Reaper's way of saying buffers and latency. So buffering and latency is to do with if we want to hear any processing through Reaper, like EQs, compression, anything like that. If we're wanting to listen to something in real time, 
then latency can be a factor. If there is too much latency, that might provide enough of a delay between the sound and what comes through the headphones or the monitor speakers that it can be quite disorienting. Conversely, if this number is too low, then the computer may not be able to handle a complex project. Finding a balance is important, and I like to choose in here because it's a nice convenient way to put a number in, and we use what we call factors of two. So 64 samples are 128, 256, 512, 1024. Those are the generally accepted values. If you're wanting to play it safe, you might want to choose 256. If you want this a little shorter, you might want to choose 128 or 64. If your computer is struggling, do find a balance and you'll find one that works best for you. Once we hit OK, that will then engage the ID interface and we can save this project as something. I'm going to call this ID14. It's always good to save your project. And then I'm going to double click in this blank space here to make a new track. Another shortcut is to go to the top to the track menu and insert new track. Our track has come in and I'm going to name that as Mike. And then I'm going to record arm. And the record arm means that this is now coming through. Now, by default, that will be coming through. You may not be able to hear it. Now is a good time to turn on your monitor speakers or headphones. And by default, the ID interfaces have their volume turned down for safety. So if you click on the speaker button or the headphone button respectively, and then turn up the encoder until the level is where you need it, then we're ready to get going. Now, by default, Reaper does monitor through its own software, which means now if we add any EQs or compression, we'll be able to hear those on the headphones or the speakers. Do be careful of feedback if you start using compression near speakers. But if that processing isn't important to you, but the latency is, you can do near zero latency monitoring by turning this off and then opening up the ID mixer. Now in the ID mixer, you can now see that I've got mic one with the levels going up and down next to a fader. And I can turn up that fader until I can hear enough level. On the ID four, it's a slightly different approach where we use the monitor mix knob on the front of the interface. There is no ID mixer app with the ID four. So if we turn this all the way to the left to input, we will only hear the two microphones or DIs through the headphones or through the monitors. And if we move that all the way to the right to DAW, we will only hear what comes through Reaper. If we have this dead center, we will hear an equal amount of both. And then if we move it to the left or to the right, we will hear more of the microphones or more of Reaper respectively. Now, one issue that you may come up against is something that I call ghosting, which is where you can hear a kind of doubling of the audio or a kind of chorus effect, or it sounds like a kind of hollowness or a robot effect. Usually this happens because you're hearing the same audio twice. And what's happened usually is that the live monitoring through the ID mixer or through the monitor mix knob is also coming out at the same time as a monitor from Reaper. So we need to make a choice, either zero latency or Reaper. So if this is the case, then if we want to use the near zero latency from the ID, then we need to unselect the microphone monitoring in Reaper. Do be aware that if you click this once and it goes red, that's auto monitoring. We need to click it again to turn it off. Conversely, if we want that through Reaper, but we don't want it through the ID mixer, then we need to turn down the fader on the input of the microphone on the left here. But we'll probably want to hear that through DAW1 plus 2, which is the default Reaper output, which is then what's coming out of the monitors or headphones. And that's it. Any questions you've got, please feel free to leave a comment down in the section below, or feel free to reach out to us at Audience and through our support team. Thanks everybody for watching, good luck, and have fun.